This is a unique study on a unique and rare condition. Uh, it is very challenging to study rare conditions, to gather those patients, to identify them, and then to really do a deep dive into understanding the pathophysiology uh, and how to treat diseases. So spontaneous coronary artery dissection is one of those conditions where patients who have experienced it um, find that they're told by their physicians that they're quite rare. The largest reported series of cases is 47. So in the sense that patients are coming forward and finding each other in order to better understand the disease, support each other. I was made aware of a group of almost 70 women who had found themselves on a social networking, a health-related social networking site, uh, and they had developed a fairly sophisticated research agenda and were out looking for researchers who might better uh, research their disease and help them understand the treatment. Uh, they approached me, one of the members approached me, and, uh, and I was intrigued. Uh, I, I looked and I realized this was something that uh, we could do because here was this patient population that hadn't been accessed who was ready, willing to volunteer for, for research. But the trick was, could we do it? It's hard enough sometimes to gather records for a patient you have in your office that comes from other physicians, and this would challenge us in getting enough of their records to confirm the diagnosis, to, uh, to, to, to gather all the relevant things to, to understand their condition, as well as to understand the patient narrative. So we asked these individuals to link it all together, kind of like that virtual medical history that physicians take. Uh, we decided we'd just do a pilot of 12 patients, not because we thought that was enough to understand the disease, but it probably would help us understand whether this was uh, potentially uh, a, a reasonable uh, way to, to go about doing this kind of research. And what we found uh, was that this was a very eager group. These are, were patients who were quite motivated. They had been wanting answers. And although we'd only been an, approved for 12 by the IRB, uh, we had 18 volunteers within the first week. Uh, and it had spread on their social networking site, the availability of the study. And we looked at this and we were excited because not only were we able to get uh, adequate and complete records from all of these patients. Uh, we had four from uh, non-US, from New Zealand, Canada, and England. Uh, so this really represented an opportunity to, to uh, identify and study patients with a rare disease in a very different way uh, than had been done before. And it spurred us then to then open the study up so that we can now um, are approved to recruit up to 200 patients. And we're also uh, for this virtual registry uh, and, um, and also have a side study looking at gen uh, a DNA markers that will build a biobank so that we can study um, at once we collect these patients and family members uh, uh, DNA, we'll look for potential genetic connections, links, and causes. Uh, I, I think what this represents is really patient-initiated research, uh, which is kind of a, a new frontier, I think, and, um, and we're excited to have participated in it. So th the goal of this pilot study wa was really to test the feasibility of being able to collect um, the appropriate medical records, including imaging data, coronary angiograms the, in their original format. Uh, collect them, review them, get enough data to actually make mean meaningful correlations on outcome uh, for these patients um, to better understand spontaneous coronary artery dissections, its causes, how people are treating it, outcomes, recurrence rates, what are the potential um, uh, comorbidities. And uh, we were able to do that in these 12 patients, which led us to open the study up now to up to 200 uh, patients total. The other thing is this is an unstudied group, and so we also sent uh, detailed questionnaires about their current health status, their um, PHQ-9 for depressive, uh, depression symptoms, the GAD-7 for anxiety symptoms, um, looking at other diseases and how, since some of these had remote SCAD, how they've done since then. And, um, and because this, and our pilot study was only women, although our larger study is for both men and women, we asked a lot about reproductive history because 30% of SCAD cases in women occur in the peripartum period, uh, which is obviously makes us think that there has to be some kind of hormonal or other uh, connection, but we don't understand it.